Welcome to this episode of Fort Worth Forward. We're here at Dickey's Arena and the Will Rogers Memorial Complex because it is rodeo time in Fort Worth, Texas. On today's show, we have representatives from the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo, as well as the Fort Worth Stock Show Syndicate, Women's Steering Business, and Methodist Justice Ministries, who's doing some great work in the community. Let's go. Welcome everyone. I'm excited to be here with Matt Brockman and Cal White, who are part of the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo. And uh, this is the 125th year of the rodeo. And so I thought it appropriate to be out here talking to them and learning a little bit more about what makes this show tick. So Matt, Cal, thanks for joining us here. Thank you. It is Thank the 125th you. year, right? This is the 125th show. Show, okay. Uh, we've had that. two cancellations, one in 1944 and obviously last year because of the pandemic. Right. So, but you count up the number of total shows, 125 this year. 125th show, I'll make sure I yep. get that correct, but that's awesome. Yes, we opened, y'all opened this facility right, I, I guess the 2020 year. Right. And that was the first show in here and the last show. Right. So this will be the next show. and so. What's new and exciting about this year's rodeo? What are we doing here, Cal? So again, we'll have 25 performances of rodeo here in Dickey's Arena. Very excited, obviously you can see state-of-the-art venue. We have all the bells and whistles when it comes to technology. Uh, from the actual rodeo format standpoint, the newest event is our Texas Champions Challenge, and okay. it will feature five uh, ch champions of, from each of the Texas rodeos uh, competing for the championship of the Texas Champions Challenge. There'll be a bullfighting component. We'll have a mutton busting finals as part of that event. Always fun for the kids. Always fun for the kids. Yep. Uh, yep. Very dynamic, very different style event. Uh, then we'll also have our pro rodeo, uh, among other, other specialty rodeos, but in our pro rodeo format, we are taking seven qualifiers from seven, di seven different qualifier rodeos around the local Texas region. And we're very excited about that because it gives some folks some opportunity to come and compete with the big dogs here in Fort Worth. And then we've also got a new barrel man this year, Matt Merritt, and uh, has a lot of experience with the PBR and traveling around. And we're very excited about having him part of the show to reach out and touch the fans as they're sitting in the stands and interact with them. That's always a great part of the bull riding to see what the, the clown does and everything else out there as part of that process, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah he's he's a, he's always a, the clowns and the barrel men are always a fan favorite because they're, they're the ones getting the fans pumped up. They're taking the, they're, they've got the, the close calls with the bucking bulls and getting run over. And so, yeah, they're always a uh, vital part of the show. That's great. Uh, well, I know we've talked about those parts, but there are youth programs as part of this too, oh, right? Yeah. So talk, let's talk about that, Matt. Yeah, boy, you know, the mission of the stock show goes right at the heart of providing opportunities for the youth of Texas to come here and compete, 4-H and FFA members from around the state. Last year, or in 2020 show rather, we had uh, youth from 240 of Texas, 254 counties come here and show animals, compete wow. in judging contests and things like that. So providing those opportunities are really important. Um, last year we provided almost a little, right at $750,000 in scholarships. Even mm -hmm. though we didn't have a show, we still uh, provided scholarship funding to different programs. Um, our sale of champions, um, which the Fort Worth Stock Show Syndicate and the other buying groups do such an awesome job with. Last year, or in 2020, I should say, raised $4.7 million for the youth of Texas. So wow. when you think about that impact, it's tremendous. So we're helping these young men and women pay for their college education. Some of them are starting their own cattle herds wow. and things like that. But I think importantly, and I think for even a city like Fort Worth, is it's an incubator because a lot of our exhibitors, youth exhibitors, don't come from Sonora, Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them come from Arlington Heights High School or, or Southwest High School, and they happen to be able to come here and, and participate in our art contest, our ag mechanics contest. That introduces them to the livestock industry that provides the meat protein that feeds this world. So it's really, I think that youth component is so important to our, to our mission. Also, uh, the development and the, uh, the update and maintenance of the Will Rogers Memorial Facility is also important, important. an important part of our mission. But that youth thing goes right at the heart of it. Well, that's wonderful because really what you talk about and we talk about youth is this, this is something that cuts across 
every gender, every yep. ethnicity, yep. every socioeconomic level, that there's a way that youth can get involved and really be a part of the rodeo, but also yep. learning and, and then maybe it's some scholarship or some business money to take. Yeah, and the cool thing about that too is the entry points are really affordable. Mm -hmm. We had a young lady uh, a couple of years ago that participated in, in our equine IQ contest. She, she I have no IQ, equine IQ, so <laughs> she I don't did. even know what that is. <laughs> she did. She was one of these horse crazy young ladies, mm. couldn't afford a horse, but came here and competed in that equine IQ contest, which is basically taking an exam on your horse smarts. Wow. Okay. Thirty thousand dollars in scholarship funds. Mm. So it provides an access point for all socioeconomic levels. Yeah, We're did, really proud well, did of that. She, do you know what happened? Did she use that for scholarships later oh, yes. instead of a oh, business? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. She, she's, I uh, believe, at A&M right now wow. studying That's equine a great science. school. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Gig them. Gig them. Uh, well, wonderful. I know that this, uh, people look at the stock show, it's a big rodeo, et cetera, but I think uh, the research I've seen, it's about a $110 million impact to the city of Fort Worth. Yep. Let's talk about that. What does that mean for the city and, and what we're doing? Well, it's really important. On top of that one, the one point, or 111 million, 110 million in economic impact. We'll round when it up, you, 111 when, million. When you, use a, <laughs> when you use a conservative multiplier of two, mm -hmm. that's roughly, you know, it's gonna come in just under 200 million. So. You know, when you look at how that reverberates across the economy, it's really important. 3.5 million in direct taxes to the city of Fort Worth, 11 million in tax revenue to the state of Texas. So, you know, it's, uh, and again, I'll circle back to the thing that the stock show then part of our mission is the enhancement and expansion of the Will Rogers Memorial Center. So since we moved out here in 1944, We've pumped, the stock show has pumped $70 million in improvements here to the Will Rogers Memorial Center. So when you see the Moncrief building or the Justin Arena or you know all of these other facilities, the stock show played a very important role in creating that infrastructure that the city then uses throughout the year. Amazing. I'm, I'm glad the investment's happening there. I know there's some more yeah. investment happening as part of this from some of the things that we're doing at City Council. Yeah. But the, the way I, you know, I'm looking at this and you tie it back to citizens, a lot of the money generated here may be used here, but it's used throughout the city, potholes, streets, lights, all the other things you that bet. happen throughout the city. And that doesn't even include the small businesses around here or restaurants that oh, yeah. get the in, in hotel rooms and other, other nights that, that are are part of that process too, right? Exactly, exactly. Well, that's wonderful. So I know you know we had a, a year on and then a year off. Mm -hmm. the world kind of changed and, yep. and went topsy-turvy for a while, but yep. what do guests need to know about accessing this building and accessing the grounds in general mm -hmm. as part of this process? We're doing our dead level best to keep it safe. Right. You know, the vaccines are a game changer. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year we didn't have the vaccines, we had to cancel in 2021. The vaccines are a game changer. So when people come onto the complex, they can be assured of, a, of, of several things. Number one, you're in a state-of-the-art facility here at Dickey's Arena with all of the- That Cal helps run here, that, right? Cal yes, helps run right. here. That's got the air purification systems and things like that. And this, is a, this is an amazing facility. The Will Rogers Memorial Center has earned the Global Bio-Risk Advisory Council's STAR accreditation. That's a cleaning and sanitation criteria that, that public facilities can apply for and earn. They've earned that accreditation, that's important. Uh, they've installed uh, bipolar ionization technology in all their HVA systems, which do a good job of removing the, the SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, okay. from the air. Um, we're doing our part by um, providing plenty of mass distribution points, hand sanitation points across the complex. Uh, signage that reminds us that we need to take action and do things to protect our health and the health of others. Um, we're working with the City of Fort Worth, uh, the, city, the Fort Worth Fire Department. They uh, will provide a, a COVID testing site here on the Wonderful. complex at the Will Rogers Center throughout the 23-day run of the show. So if you get there and you're not 100% sure, we're going to have a Fort Worth Fire Department uh, testing site there. Also working with Tarrant County Public Health to provide a vaccine site, a vaccine clinic throughout the 23 day run. You want the Moderna, the Pfizer, the Johnson & Johnson shot, the boosters. You get any of them here. You get any of them here and we're glad to provide that service. There are no mandates. Okay. There's not a mass mandate. There's not a vaccine, but there's not a vaccination mandate. Okay, you but don't have to show your vaccine card to get a facility. You don't have to show your vaccine okay. card. You don't have to, to, to wear a mask. 
We make the mask available. We've been doing this now for 18 months or so. People know what to do to keep themselves safe. We're going to provide measures to help you keep safe. We just ask that our guests uh, be mindful and do the things they need to do to protect their health and the health of others. Do that and we're going to have a heck of a stock show. Thank, I, we want everybody to be safe. And people have their different definitions if they need to wear a mask or sure. what makes them comfortable. So sure. I'm glad there's some flexibility there, yeah. but also you're providing the services with COVID testing and vaccinations right. if people want them on site. So exactly. I think that's wonderful. You know, one, one sort of last question, since we're sitting in this beautiful building, you know, what has this added to the stock show, having Dickey's Arena as part of this? It's allowed us to better utilize the rem all of the Will Rogers Memorial Center. So, whereas in 2019, the Will Rogers Center or the Will Rogers Coliseum was just used solely for professional rodeo and our other rodeo performances, it's opened up that Coliseum where we can do other things there. And again, expand the impact we have. Cal here is a former high school rodeo athlete with a North Texas High School Rodeo yeah, Association. Yeah, what sport? Bull riding. I love bulls. My brother oh, was 1985 North Texas High School Rodeo Association bull riding champion. Well, that's great. We have a scholarship rodeo over, over there in the Coliseum. Yeah. On the 29th, I think, right? Yes, sir. 29th. 29th. Yeah, 29th. Saturday, Saturday yep. the 29th. 29th. All the champions of each event get $2,000 yeah. scholarships, a buckle, and a jacket. And so it's a great thing for the North Texas High School Rodeo Association. Yeah. Wonderful. And, uh, yeah. So if I might, might, since we're on the rodeo topic, yeah. if I might make mention, we're also going to be broadcasted on the Cowboy Channel. All 25 performances of our professional rodeo will be on the Cowboy Channel, okay. among other events, such as the North Texas High School Rodeo Association Scholarship Rodeo yeah. and a variety of other competitions. So yeah. we're looking forward to That's having wonderful. that. That's wonderful. Can you still get tickets? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Where, where can people find the tickets? FWSSR.com. Okay. All you have to do is go to the upper right-hand corner of that website, and it says tickets click and you're there. Wonderful. And that's just not the rodeo too. Remember there's all the stock show piece Absolutely. that's on the other other side of yeah. Will Rogers. That's what you're talking about. The complex is there. Yeah. So you can make a whole day of it. I grew up coming here with the kids uh, or as a kid and now with my kids and going to see the chicken playing uh, tic-tac-toe. <laughs> it's still a, f a favorite. So that's what I'll tell everybody yeah. is come come spend the day. Yeah. And yeah. Museums even if you're not coming are, here, yeah. the museums, you're right. There's yeah. so much to do around here. Yes, sir. Well, Cal, Matt, thank you so much for having us here. We're looking forward to the rodeo and, and rise and shine, right? Rise and shine. That's, that's, that's the theme, theme this year, right? Yes, this sir. thing is legendary. This thing is legendary, yeah. rise and shine. Yes, sir. Y'all come out and see this, and we'll be right back. I am now here with JT Augenbaugh, who is chairman of the Fort Worth Stock Show Syndicate, and Becky Renfro Borbola, who is chair of the Women's Steering Business Committee. Welcome, y'all. Thanks, Thanks for Michael. having us. Yeah, thank you. Great. Well, glad to have you here. So I don't think a lot of people know outside the regular things that happen of the rodeo, so much, so many other organizations are a part of it and raise funds for the, 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 the kids that participate and, and, and other programs surrounding it. So I wanted to have y'all on here today just to let that message be known that this is a bigger, wider thing than just what happens physically here on the rodeo nights and days and, and what happens at the cattle cattle uh, pens and everything. So tell us a little bit about the Stock Show Syndicate, how it got started, what's its purpose? So the sale of champions, the junior livestock sale of champions, if you think about the Stock Show, everything outside of the rodeo, 27,000 exhibitors come to the Stock Show, bringing animals, bringing different uh, projects to 11,000 of those are junior exhibitors. And okay. so they show their animals. Um, and they're from and everywhere, right? From yeah. And Brad Barnes and Matt Brockman will tell you however many counties in the state were represented at the last sale. It's just about every county in the state. Wonderful. Uh, bring their animals to uh, the show um, and they go through uh, the process and get ranked and judged. And the champions, um, and so in our case for steers is where we're focused, um, the Junior Livestock Sale of Champions uh, is traditionally the last Saturday of the stock show. Uh, this year it's February 5th. And so the top 10 from every breed, every class of steers, goats, lambs, and pigs, sheep and pigs, um, will go through the sale where the kids show their animal. And if you remember the, the kids, they buy an animal at the beginning of the year, they raise it for a year, um, they feed it, groom it, maintain it. Um, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of effort, uh, a lot of investment on their part. And those that are rewarded uh, with uh, placing high in their class go to the sale of champions. And so it was the night before the 1980 sale of champions where 11 friends um, got together and decided we need to make sure that these kids are being rewarded above market 
for their efforts. And so they committed $11,000 each to go to the sale the next morning and to, to contribute to the kids and make sure that they're gonna be rewarded properly. Well, started from there. Uh, they got so enthused with, uh, with the process and, and helping the kids. They actually spent over $20,000 that first year in 1980. The next year, uh, the momentum continued and they formed a 501c3, the Fort Worth Stock Show Syndicate. That year they raised over $100,000, $130,000 on 1981 sale. And so since that time, um, the momentum has just continued to progress. Um, the sale of champions since 1980 has raised over $65 million wow. for the youth uh, in agriculture in the state of Texas. Um, and our momentum continues with uh, the addition of multiple buying groups. Uh, the women's steering business has been a significant uh, impact to the sale since they're, they began to get involved. Wonderful. So tell us a little about Women's Steering Business, how it got started. and So 2013 was our first sale and literally four weeks before the sale I sent out an email to you know se several friends and um, business women that I knew and said hey would you get $500 and let's go to the sale and buy a steer raised by a young woman. That's what makes us different. And um, I had 75 women step up in that first sale we had $45,000 and the next year, kind of like the syndicate, everybody was excited about what we were doing and um, because this was new money to the sale day. We were, no one was asking any of us for money. And so I had, I think we had 189 women step up and we brought almost $300,000 to that sale the second year. And to date, this is our eighth sale in seven sales we've raised. We've given the young women $1.6 million. Wow. What I, I want to say about Fort Worth that I love is our sale gives 100% of the money to the kids where the other sales do not. Okay. So I love that about Fort Worth. That's, that's wonderful. So you, you mentioned this too. Y'all fundraise as part of Stock Show Syndicate, and that's a big piece of that. But y'all are writing checks. Is right. that, that's sort of a main difference between your buying group and other buying groups. Yes, uh, we, I think, are the only buying group that write a personal check. So I have 125 to 150 women writing a personal check uh, because we're tired of fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> so we said, you okay. Said you, you, no one was hitting you up. I'm surprised that no one was hitting yeah, you up because so I know we, you get hit up all the time for everything. Yes, but. you do get hit up a lot. But no, we just were tired of fundraising. We all serve on board of directors and yeah. we're like, we, you know, so everybody writes a personal check. Well, tell us a little bit more about who, who are the women that make up women's So we business. have, uh, our youngest is, well, actually, we have a nine-year-old that's a member. Okay. And all the way up to. You got a big checkbook. Yes. She, <laughs> I think her mom and dad help her a little bit. <laughs> but all the way up to 80 years old. And um, they, the some are retired. Very careers, yeah, yeah. Very careers. We have uh, CEO and presidents of companies here in Fort Worth outside of Fort Worth. We have one young lady, um, her sister is a member and she's in the military and she heard about our group and she's long distance. She's in Colorado and she She's joined. believed in the cause and wants She to believed help. in the cause and she gives us a thousand dollars every year but she loved the cause that we were helping young ladies. And you know the first young lady we supported, she just graduated uh, from Texas Tech and now she's working on her master's in animal science. And she came and spoke to us in September at our launch party and it was just phenomenal to hear in you know seven, eight years how our money, She there's four girls in the family. They have all shown at the Fort Worth sale and how our money went into their college fund. And that's what we hear. And you know, the syndicate hears these stories. All the buying groups hear wonderful stories about how we impact these kids' lives. And some of these kids, you know, it cost, they said, $6,000 to feed right. that steer in a year. And so if the child gets $10,000 from the sale, they, better return than some, some investments. Better return than some, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. And a, a lot of the kids reinvest in their um, agricultural careers, but they also, it also goes into their college fund. That's amazing. Yeah. So the, just the support. You've talked a little bit about, JT, the sale of champions. You know, what goes into that day? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? And you know, who can participate? It, well, it's a culmination of a year's worth of work. We, we are a year-round organization. Uh, we have 160 members uh, of our organization, and so have events throughout the year to keep our members engaged, uh, keep them motivated to keep 
uh, our buyers and our sponsors. So we do fundraise. So uh, of our members, we ask that they open their networks uh, of business contacts, friends, family members, and go out and fundraise and bring buyers to the sale to actually see it, experience it. Um, and because those that are there, they're going to be back next year. They get to meet the kids who raise the animals, spend time with them. Um, they're going to be back. And so we foster an environment throughout the year that really builds up towards uh, sale day. We have a, a sponsor party, which uh, up in the north side uh, in the stockyards in the fall to kind of kick off the season as we get ready for the stock show. Um, and it's all about keeping our buyers and our sponsors uh, enthused and engaged um, and again culminates on the sale. Uh, and so it is a, a lot of work. We host a, a breakfast, cowboy breakfast on sale day morning. We feed over a thousand people who are getting ready for the sale. Um, we have a lot of fun. Scarves, you get the scarves. We get the scarves, all, all you, you get your badges. We, you yeah, we, yeah. Multiple badges and <laughs> pins and and uh, it's it's fun time. It is a really fun time. Uh, I encourage you. It's open to the public. Okay. And so the sale of champions uh, this year is February 5th. It is uh, 9 a.m. And so that's when the grand champion, the grand mm -hmm. steer champion is auctioned off. Uh, you will not, not only will you not be able to find a seat in that uh, <laughs> West Sale Arena, you won't be able to find an inch of space that is not occupied. It is a really um, exciting uh, time, exciting event. Um, and so it is open to the public. I encourage anybody uh, to come and participate. Um, and if you feel Where so can inclined. Where they get the information to know more about it? So, um, uh, Fort Worth Stock Show Syndicate, uh, FWSSS.com, FWSSR, the Stock Show and Rodeo's website. Um, they'll, uh, they have a the large selection uh, okay. section dedicated to the livestock junior exhibitors. Um, and so, uh, again, here on the grounds, the Will Rogers grounds, um, 9 a.m., uh, February 5th. It's a That's fun wonderful. time. And Women's Steering Business, where can they find more information about that? Uh, womensteeringbusiness.com. Great. Yeah. Well, I want to say, you know, this is not your day job, right? You're at J.P. Morgan and you're Mrs. Renfro Foods. Awesome. Yes. So, uh, which is, I want to do a shout out because y'all are all, you're involved in so many things and help the community in so many ways. And I know this is just a piece of what you do mm -hmm. overall. So thank you on that behalf. And thank you of all the kids and the lives you've changed by, by what you and your members do. We really appreciate it. It's well worth it. It's a, Fort Worth is an amazing place that really steps up to help the community. And this is a way for our community to help the whole state of Texas. True words. That's yeah. amazing. Well, thank you. And we'll be right back. One of the things I love about Fort Worth is our giving spirit. We just heard from Fort Worth Stock Show Syndicate, as well as Women Steering Business, who are supporting uh, kids that are involved with the rodeo, uh, with scholarships and, and other means necessary to build a business. Uh, now I'm here with Jody Knotten, who is with Methodist Justice Ministry. She's the legal director there, and another great charity nonprofit here serving the people of Fort Worth. Welcome, Jody. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm well, thank you. Good, good. Well, I um, love the mission of Methodist Justice Ministry. So tell our viewers a little bit, what is it, and how does it help people? Okay, we were um, started with the specific purpose to focus on really um, challenging family law cases. Um, specifically involving domestic violence and child abuse. Um, so our primary criteria is that there are some sort of domestic violence or child abuse. Um, we help women, mothers, fathers, uh, caregivers, whoever's trying to help um, keep the child safe and also women seeking to leave a domestic violence situation. So very important work and it happens more here than we probably hear about, right? Sadly. Uh, sadly, that's so what's a success story? Tell us a good success story that y'all have had. Okay. Um, we worked with Olivia a few years ago. Uh, she was 20 years old attending Tarrant County College. She had three half siblings that were ages uh, seven, eight, and 10. She, they had been kind of bouncing around from various family members. They landed on her doorstep one day just for the weekend. They ended up staying several months later. She didn't have any authority to get the medical care, um, treatment things that they needed and so she came to seek our services we were able to get her custody of her three siblings um, she actually had to quit school for a bit to care for them she's now back in school working on a nursing degree she ended up working at uh, the church first methodist church for a bit as well um, and so she was able to get those protections and the custody that she needed to be able to make decisions for her children and keep them safe from their uh, their mother who is unfortunately addicted to methamphetamine so and it sounds like maybe get right her life right so she mm -hmm. can go back to school and do 
have a job, it sounds like, and maybe some other things. Yes, yeah. yes, we focus on the whole family, not just the children um, that we're helping. So we provide um, services for the whole family. Yeah, tell us some of the other services okay. that you provide. Yes, we are definitely different than a typical uh, law firm. We provide counseling free of charge um, to our clients and their children, um, not only the children that have maybe experienced abuse directly, but also indirectly. Um, we provide emergency financial assistance, which is especially important for women leaving abusive situations because maybe they don't have the financial means to pay a deposit on an apartment, pay utilities, and all of those things to break free from that cycle. And so we're able to provide that emergency financial assistance. And then also we help you know, poor grandparents get custody of their, children, their grandchildren. They're already poor, and we make them poorer by giving them more children right. to have to care for. And so we can provide some assistance for them as well. Um, we also just go above and beyond with um, our friendship and our guidance um, to our clients. I've actually taken my family some to help. mentoring of sorts, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Yeah, so I've actually taken my family to help move a client to oh, a new wow. residence. Um, you know, we just really go above and beyond to help our clients. Some total wraparound services. Exactly. Well, I'm excited. The reason I wanted to introduce you to the viewers uh, because y'all are the Foodie Philanthropy 2022 charity yes. partner this year. And for those that the viewers that might not know, this was a, uh, a, a charity my wife and I started, Joanna Crane, we started, and it brings restaurants together. Uh, they donate a table of 10 all on one night. And we have many restaurants that do it. I think last year we had about 40 restaurants and all the money that's raised is given to the charity partner that year. And y'all are the charity of choice. And so we're very excited about that, about partnering mm -hmm. with you. We understand the, the mission that you have and what you make, but uh, what, what does it mean to you that y'all are receiving these funds this year? It means so much to us. Um, we'll be able to continue um, providing the life-saving and life-changing work that we do, and we'll also um, be able to reach you know, additional people that we haven't reached in the past through sharing our message um, with those that attend. That's, that's wonderful. That is a big piece of this event. It's, mm -hmm. I've always said it'll raise a little bit of money and a little bit of awareness for you. And I know that other past partnerships that we've had, it's raised even more money after mm -hmm. the event and it's created lifelong partnerships, volunteers, mm -hmm. other knowledge that people know. So I'm hopeful and I know that will happen with y'all as well. You know, this year's event is February 26th. So if anybody's interested in, in uh, learning more about that, that's foodiephilanthropy.org and uh, February 26th, foodiephilanthropy.org. And how can people find you? Uh, through our website, uh, www.methodistjusticeministry.org, all spelled out. And we also have a Facebook and Instagram pages. Great, well, I appreciate the work that you're doing on behalf of those that in a lot of times can't help themselves and they don't even know where to go to start mm -hmm. to help themselves. So thank you for what you're doing and, and uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We're excited. Great, we'll be right back. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Fort Worth Forward. I hope you've enjoyed meeting some of the people that are part of the rodeo and part of the stock show. And you know, come out and see this beautiful facility. It is an amazing time. Bring your family, bring your friends, and have a great time. Until the next time, thank you again for watching.